Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the fourth day of Pension Awareness Week 2020. Uh, this is our fourth day today, uh, and this week has absolutely flown by. Um, we've, we've had some really good sessions this week, uh, some really good dialogue uh, between our subject matter experts and obviously the questions that have come in from you guys. So thank you very much for those. Um, and thanks very much for giving up your time over lunchtime as well. Um, if you <laughs> Anything like me, it's a bit difficult when uh, when it comes to lunchtime to do anything else but eat. So I do have a salad box staring at me, ready to go for after this session. So um, just a couple of housekeeping things first from me. Um, this session is going to be recorded, so this will be available uh, on the website, uh, usually the day after, the afternoon um, of the day after. So um, you can watch this back again if you want to. However, if you wanted to make notes, please make sure that you have a pen, uh, some paper, and or a digital device at hand just to make some notes uh, but don't feel you have to you can sit back and just enjoy it and then watch it again at your own leisure afterwards uh, another important make sure you've got a cuppa as well because it is 45 minute session so you might want to keep yourself rehydrated um, so yep that's the housekeeping done um, for those of you who are rejoining us, welcome. I um, hope you've enjoyed the rest of the week. Um, today we have got pension surgery. It's our second pension surgery this week. Um, and this one is a dedicated one today to the 2015 Remedy Programme, or as most of you will know it as, the McLeod Judgment. Um, it's, it's a big thing uh, and it affects an awful lot of our civil servants. So we thought we'd have a session today on this just to really delve into the detail uh, to answer the questions that um, a lot of you had submitted um, and really sort of help you understand a bit more about it. Um, it, it is massive uh, in the grand scheme of things um, and your pension is obviously it's an important thing. It's a massive benefit as part of your total reward package of being a civil servant. Um, and I, I can't stress enough the importance of thinking about your pension literally from, from the moment you join to the moment you come up to retirement. So those years in between 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, if you think about your pension <clears throat> and planning for it all the time, um, it can never come too early, uh, but it can come too late if you're sort of retiring uh, at 65 and you kind of only think about it in the last few years. So it's, uh, it's important to note it now. What we'd also like you to do today, um, obviously, whilst getting yourself informed and educated on the McLeod judgment, is thinking about five things that you can take away uh, and do in the coming days, weeks, months, or even uh, years, uh, depending on sort of your age and um, how well informed you are about your pension. Uh, one of these, I'd really, really like to stress this to you, is having a look at the scheme website. If you haven't seen it before, it is an absolute wealth of information. Uh, it contains scheme guides, it contains FAQs, it's in, there's information on there about when you, if you've just joined the scheme, to if you're thinking about coming up to retirement, to everything in between. There's helpful videos, uh, there's a link to the portal on there, um, which you as a member can access. Um, it's quite easy to access it as well. You'll just need your membership number uh, and the registration code, which you'll be able to find on your employer's intranet. Um, and on this portal, you can change things like your death benefit nomination, which is an important benefit of your pension scheme. And that basically means should you pass away in service, uh, your family, your loved ones, family, friends, cats, dogs, uh, or donkey sanctuaries, will get something um, if, if you were to pass away. Uh, you can also change your personal details on there. You can view your annual benefit statement on there. You can use the modeler to look at uh, sort of the, the options available to you when you retire. So if you're anything like my dear Uncle Derek, who has had a very long retirement and enjoyed his retirement, likes his holidays, Sky Sports subscriptions, uh, eating out, that sort of stuff, um, it will help you sort of plan for your retirement accordingly if you want a nice comfortable one. Um, so those are all the benefits of the portal, which are also available on a handy mobile app, which is also available on an iOS and Android devices. So uh, without further ado, we will go into the session with our subject matter experts today. Um, what I'd like to do is I'll introduce you to them and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through some questions with them. So um, just quickly on this. Um, we know that pensions is difficult uh, and sort of can be a bit confusing to some people. Um, so what we're really going to try and do today is get into the detail um, and really, really sort of help simplify it for you and 
it should help you sort of start planning accordingly and understanding what it means to you because if you are affected by McLeod um, there's there no better time than, than the present, the here and the now to start thinking about what it could possibly mean for you in the next five, ten years. So I'll introduce you to my colleagues. Uh, first of all, we've got Andy Jones, who is an engagement manager within Civil Service World Mail Pensions, uh, and Silla Christmas, who is a valuation and strategic review manager. Um, and these guys really do know what they're talking about when we come to McLeod. So hopefully we'll be able to go through some of these questions um, and get you some decent answers. So without further ado, I will get into the questions with Silla. If that's okay, I'm gonna start with you first, Silla. Absolutely. Um, First question we've had come through, uh, this is quite a meaty question, so bear with me. And if you need me to read it out again, just say, what impact will the landmark case successfully upheld in the Supreme Court by the firefighters have in light of the reduction in 2015 of civil service pension benefits? Okay, thank you. And good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Personally, I find chocolate helps to get me through pensions, anything complicated, particularly pensions tax. We will be pleased to hear we're not doing too much on tax, but you know, we can't see you, so eat whatever you like, um, let, but let's get on uh, to answer your question. I've been mired in uh, dealing with the McLeod judgment for the last couple of years now, so I'm very familiar with it and have been engaged with Treasury on how this pays forward. And one of the things that you will get sick of me saying is that there is a Treasury public consultation on at the moment as we speak. It's open until the October the 11th, so you've got just about a month, and it focuses on how are we going to resolve the issue of age discrimination that came out of the McLeod judgment. So please do take a look, read it up, and if you have thoughts on the questions being asked, and there's a number of them, please participate. And I will keep banging this drum because it's really, really important you have your say at this stage. Um, there is a reference to it or on the members page on the website, and you know, just click in and it'll uh, give you the link and some background. So, but what is the McLeod judgment? So McLeod isn't actually a firefighter, McLeod was a judge. McLeod, um, he was a young judge who thought that actually the fact that he was transferred to a new scheme in 2015, whereas some of his older colleagues were left in their old schemes, was discriminatory. And that was um, very much uh, seen, sorry, somebody was ringing my bell and it's distracting me. I'll just ignore them because you're more important. Um, it was in, in so the judgment focused on that protection of the older worker. So what, what had happened was the schemes had all looked and assessed their members based on age at the 31st of March 2012. And if they were less than 10 years from their normal retirement age at March 2012, they were allowed to stay in their old scheme. So the judgment looked at this and said, actually, no, you, that's not a justified discrimination that's wrong and you're in breach of legislation and you've got to fix it. So that's where we are now. I do want to bust, bust a few myths around this though, because um, there's, you know, some people think that actually what the judgment was saying was that Alpha was wrong and that we were wrong to set up a new scheme and that wasn't allowed. It doesn't say that at all. So it is, it was absolutely appropriate to set up a new scheme to make it career average rather than final salary and the employer certainly had the authority to change the retirement age. So it's important when you think about the remedy to recognise that the judgment did not uh, challenge those aspects. Just the fact we were protected a small group of older workers when we did the reforms. And so that's that. That's the position in summary. And by the way, the firefighter is called Sergeant, which is why the firefighters reference came in. because There was also a case from them. That's brilliant. Thanks, Scylla. So just to go back to your first point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you visit the scheme website um, and you have a look at the members section on there, you'll see a carousel. And on the carousel in there is, uh, is a direct link to go and have a look at the consultation. So um, if you haven't done it already, absolutely first port of call um, should be to go and have a look at that because it, that would be really helpful for you. And your views really will shape the outcome of this. So, uh, yeah, please do. Um, right, Andy, I'm going to try and keep this fair, so I'll come to you next. Um, Andy, I've got kind of two questions for you here, so uh, do bear with. Um, understanding what will happen regarding McLeod is really important 
uh, forward planning. Uh, I'm 52 this year, um, and I'd quite like some clarity soon. How can I find out if I'm affected by McLeod? Uh, great question. And just to reiterate what everyone else is, well, what uh, Nige and Silla said, uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, so, to repeat what Silla said as well, there is a public consultation that is currently ongoing, uh, being run by HM Treasury, Treasury about the 2015 remedy program. Uh, now that uh, consultation, consultation, sorry, um, centres around two main points. Uh, the first one being is that all the staff who aren't in Alpha are what we refer to as the protected members um, need to be moved into Alpha. So what that means is every single civil servant from a particular date will be in the same scheme. So what the proposal actually is, is saying that from around April 22, uh, so April 2022, all civil servants, they'll be in the same scheme, i.e. Alpha. Like Silla said, Alpha wasn't deemed to be incorrect. It was those protections that were offered to um, the elder generation. Um, they were the bits that were found discriminatory. The second bit uh, relates to the choices for those individuals who have been discriminated against. Um, what we mean by choices is how do they want their um, remedy service, so the, the bit over the um, when Alpha came in until the discrimination has been removed, so April 22, um, how do they want that service treated or how do they want that pension treated do they want to um so we know a individuals will be given a choice so what we want to know and the uh, consultation is centered around is when do you want that choice so one of the proposals is around having an immediate choice so you will get all the information you can to have a mate to make a informed decision basically as soon as possible, so before you leave, things like that. Now, the good thing with that is that you can plan for your retirement, you know what you're going to get and all those things. The, the second option is actually what's called a deferred choice. So basically what that means is that you will get the choice of um, how you want that service to be treated when you come to retire or when you leave. Um, so, the good thing with that bit, you're, you're not actually pr predicting um, fluctuations in your earnings, things like that. You know what the picture is. That, like I say, the downside to it is you actually don't know what you're going to be getting in retirement until you actually come to retire. So who does the remedy actually affect? It's those members who were in service in March 2012. Uh, we're going to come into more detail about the um, later on if my memory serves um, so it's all those individuals who were in service in March 2012 and a limited number of rejoiners as well uh, depending on certain criteria may be affected uh, what I would recommend is there are on the in the Treasury's consultation documents there is a really good flow chart which you can use to, to see how um, to see sorry if you are affected Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. That, that's really helpful. Um, and just obviously to reiterate that message, um, this this record this will be uh, available uh, hopefully from tomorrow afternoon onwards. So if uh, if you haven't caught Andy there, you can go back and have a look at tomorrow. And as Andy previously mentioned, we will try and get as many of these answers up on the website within the next couple of weeks as well. So um, brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Um, Andy, I'm just going to hold you there because I'm going to stick with you for a second. And um, what timescales are cabinet are the cabinet office working to in order to resolve the age discrimination remedy program? Are there any dates available yet? Uh, so I briefly mentioned it um, in the question just then, uh, my answer just then, that I didn't ask the question. Um, and we're looking around the uh, April 2022. Now, the reason it's April 2022 is that there's new legislation needs to be put in place um, to enable us to actually carry out um, the work. So, as I mentioned, we have to wait until this legislation goes live, for a better phrase, um, so we can actually offer people, um, or offer the affected members of how and what their benefits would look like um, and how they want to be treated. In relation to scenarios, things like that, there are, um, not, not scenarios, sorry, what, so time is extremely important. Now, 
with the McLeod judgment, it's extremely complicated and complex. You know, we have to look at different scenarios of how people have retired. So it's not just individuals who are in service. It's people who have left for if they have resigned. So they've got what's called a preserved ward. If they've left under ill health terms, things like that. So it's various different scenarios we actually have to look at to enable us to put people into the correct uh, position. What we will always do is once we know what we are allowed to say we will come out and inform uh, our members usually via the website but we do updates on and you've probably seen it all this year on our active member newsletter uh, we've done publications on the website we've did something on the one of the inserts on the annual benefit statement all things like that um, so just keep your eye out for anything that we um, publicize uh, to make you aware we want you to be informed because uh, information is power at the end of the day. And I think. Um, so I'll just answer, ask the next question, if that's all right with you, Scylla. Absolutely. Carry on, please. Andy. Cool. So. The next question that comes through, has come through is, I am still in Classic, but due to be tapered in, I think, next year to Alpha. So will it still happen in light of the McLeod judgment? So this is someone who's going to be tapering in the near future, but they've not done yet. So will they still be expected to taper into Alpha? OK, so just for everybody on the call, in case they haven't heard, don't quite understand what taper is, this was a process where um, people, most people went into Alpha on the 1st of April 2015, but there was this. Yes, you will continue to taper. So you will move over to Alpha on the planned date, whether that's next year or even as late as 2022. And please remember, you know, the intention is that everybody will go to Alpha from 2022. But in terms of the remedy, what we'll do is make sure that you are addressed. And the uh, Treasury consultation, there's a C word again, um, is it has a special who are in that taper group. And what it says is that you will get the same offer as everybody else. You will get to choose whether you're in your classic uh, scheme from 2015 to 2022 or whether you're in alpha from 2015 to 2022. And that will be your choice. And again, when that choice is made, will be either um, near retirement, deferred choice underpin, or as close as possible after 22 that we can make it immediate choice. And that, again, is one of the consultation questions. Brilliant. Thanks, Scylla. That's that's really helpful. Um, do you mind if we just stick with you, Scylla, for the minute? Um, I've got another question here for you. Um, I left the main Alpha Pension Scheme as a result of the 2015 changes to Classic. Um, if returning to Classic is an option for active members, can I rejoin? Um, and, and adding on to that, uh, what about those that didn't take up Alpha opting for partnership as Alpha was unaffordable? What kind of happens here? Is there any choices available yet? OK, so at the moment, no, you can't rejoin it, not in your pre-2015 scheme. So the rules in terms of switching in and out of the main scheme, opting out and opting back in are the same as they have been. So you are allowed to go back, but you're going to alpha. Now, this is what the, the, the question about I decided to do something. I decided to opt out. I decided to join partnership because you made the change to the scheme is something we call a contingent decision. It means you acted on because of the result of our actions. Now, your position in terms of the remedy has yet to be decided. So if you go into the consultation, there's a section that says, you know, that lays out the proposal for how we'll deal with these circumstances. And in essence, it comes down to you'll need to tell us why you did what you did potentially evidence that and then we'll consider whether or not to bring you in scope for the remedy that's the proposal you can comment on that through the consultation uh, what i would stress and i think it's something um, that came out from a meeting we had with some member representatives yesterday is that the consultation 
we're not asking you in the consultation to choose what's happening to your pension now. You're not making the decision about your pension now. The consultation is just about principle. It's, we are going to give you a choice. When do you want that choice? We're planning to move everybody into alpha. What do you think of that? How do you want this question of contingent decisions handled? So it's all about principle. So it isn't about specific detail. Now, I think um, I've had a few members write to me directly and say, I can't make this choice without more detail, without modelers and understanding what it means for me. So you're absolutely right. We, you will need more detail. And when we ask you to make a choice that specifically influences your pension, we will provide you that information. Now, with an immediate choice exercise, what that's likely to mean is we will give you access to modelers, tell you what you have now, and then you get the opportunity to think about, well, where might life take you before retirement? Will you get promoted? Will you go part time? Will you leave? How, how will your salary change? So you consider, consider which scheme might be better for you and make that choice. With deferred choice underpin, well, it'll be at points at retirement. Now, normally when you retire, you get a retirement quote, you check that the details are correct and sign up and you know what you're getting. Well, with a deferred choice underpin, what will probably happen is you'll get two quotes. One that shows it if you're in your old scheme for the 2015 to 2022 period and one if you're in alpha for that period. Um, and you get a choice at retirement um, on, for, to, and you just sign the quote you want in essence. And we. Just a reminder, though, it's not just about the pension, it's also about the other benefits associated. But, you know, that will be outlined in more detail at the time. So um, three key points in summary. One, we're not asking you to choose now about what's going to happen to you for remedy. Uh, we will ask you in the future. Um, and when we do, we'll give you lots of information so you can make an informed decision. To the original question, um, you know, when we were asked to decide, um, you know, can I go back into classic now um, because I've opted out? No, you can't go back into classic. You can back, opt back in the pension system and go into alpha if you want. And details of those are on the website. Brilliant. Thanks, Silla. That's really helpful. So would, would you just remind, mind reminding me, when does the consultation close? So the consultation closes on the October the 11th. Brilliant. OK. Uh, and the best place to get to that is through the scheme website, uh, through the member section, uh, and then members can presumably read a bit more about it and then go on there and, and they can have their say about it. Yeah. So there's a link through to the Treasury consultation page. And please, can I stress, you don't respond to us. Don't email us with your views at civil service pensions. You need to give your views directly to, to Treasury on the consultation and details of how to do that, whether you want to email in or write in, are part of the consultation document itself. Thanks, Silla. So just a quick reminder, and you will get annoyed with me by the end of this, and I'm so sorry, as I can. The scheme website is www.civilservicepensionscheme.org.uk, or you could just Google civil service pensions uh, and you'll see it by the... Yeah, the address it should come up as the top and it will be the .org.uk that you're looking for. Uh, Andy, I'm going to come back to you if that's OK. Uh, hopefully you're still there. Um, the next question is, will the 2015 remedy be looking at the three years between 2012 and 2015? Um, I'm a little bit confused by this. Is it just those three years or a bit more? I've got a bit more on this question, but I'll, I'll let you answer that bit first. Uh, in short, no. Uh, we, the, the reason for that is those who were in service between 2012 and 2015 weren't discriminated against. The discrimination, for one of a better phrase, kicked in from April 2012 when Alpha was introduced. OK, brilliant. Thanks, Andy. That's really helpful. So th the next part of this question then. Um, so I left the civil service after 30 years um, in 2011. But I rejoined in 2014. So would I be captured by the McLeod judgment, obviously, given that there's three years of a bit of a lapse in service? Yeah, so you may. It depends. It's quite technical. So I'm going to um, probably delve into a little bit of detail on this, if that's all right. So as we said, the, the first part of the first question you asked is individuals, the, the service in between the 2012 and 2015, isn't going to be part it isn't part of the remedy period um 
the the date in 2012 is important because that is the date that was used to assess those protected members that uh Scylla and i have mentioned uh so those protected members hold so they were within 10 years of retirement as at 2012 and weren't moved into uh, the 2015 scheme um so that is where the as we keep saying that is where the discrimination was um judged to have occurred um things get a little bit more technical so the individual in this question has rejoined um it gets a little bit more technical because if they joined within i think it's a five-year period they, they could have been discriminated against uh because um we may have used their age to assess uh, whether or not they go into alpha or not so if they fell into that bracket um, we have track of all those individuals and we would be contacting them uh, accordingly to provide any choices information things like that when it is um, due so for those who are not impacted so a lot of people who were brand new to the scheme in uh, post april 2012 um so they've never been a civil servant things like that who joined after 2015 are highly unlikely to be part of uh the remedy program because they've not been assessed by age um and things like that so again a lot of information on the scheme website uh, about this which i would um recommend people to refer to thanks andy so Roughly speaking, then, if someone was, say, 25 uh, in 2012, would they be falling into this? Again, it depends on 2012 when um, they felt. If it was before um, the 31st March 2012, then yes, they would. Um, if it was afterwards, then unless they've had previous service, um, then if they had previous service, they may. It all depends on the length of break and the reason why they left. Uh, but if they were, if they are um, brand spanking new to the civil service, never had any service before, so they just left university or they've moved from, like I did back in the older days, from JD Sports into the civil service, then no, uh, they wouldn't be caught up in it. All right, thanks, Andy. I'm just going to sort of like delve into this a little bit. So. Why is the 31st of December 2012 the qualifying date? So I joined in August 2012 um, and had my pension move from Nuvos to Alpha. You sort of expand on that. A date, basically, a date needed to be used. So it was deemed that the um, that that date, the 31st of March, was the most uh, opportune date to make that assessment. Okay, right. Okay, that, that's fair enough. That makes sense. Thanks, Andy. Um, Silla, I'm going to move back over to you now. Um, I think I've uh, just tired Andy out a little bit there. So not much has been said about those of us who are in Nuvos. Um, will McLeod Judgment Remedy apply to those of us in Nuvos as well? Yeah, it certainly could. It does depend when you join. So this picks up on Andy's theme about were you in service before or after the 31st of March 2012. So Nuvos actually came into existence in 2007. So if you joined any time between 2007 and the 31st of March 2012, you'd have had your position assessed on the basis of your age at the 2012 date and that would have decided whether or not you moved into alpha. If you joined from the 1st of April 2012 onwards, then you would join NUVOS but on the understanding that you would then automatically transfer to alpha. So it does all come down to your joining date really, um, unless apart from the return as piece. But if you were in service before 20, 31st of March 2012, that's a critical criteria. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, Ella. That's really helpful. Um, Andy, I'm going to come back to you now. Um, I think you've had a long enough rest. Um, now this is a great question because uh, I really like stuff like this. Uh, please, could we be given scenarios or illustrations for how the McLeod judgment uh, will affect our own personal pension uh, in our annual statement? Um, is that something we can possibly do? Um, potentially, yeah. Um, so currently there are some actually some scenarios as part of the consultation documents uh which will show um basically if an individual falls into this bracket their pension could be this or it could be this uh that is something we are very very keen on doing but we can't really do anything until that consultation um uh, response has been published so once that's been published we'll be able to see what we can inform people of so 
that should tell us if if it's an immediate choice that has been decided we could show what an immediate choice would look like to members um, and we could then delve into what tools we could provide to members um, as Scylla mentioned in I think it was the first um, the first and um, first or second question is that we, we what we'd look at is what support tools we could provide so things like modelers calculators um, when people if it's worthwhile doing something on the annual statement that is something we could definitely look look at um, but like i say we can't actually do anything until we know what the response to the consultation is uh, I, me I, I mentioned it before we are very keen to keep you informed um, we we have a duty to let you know everything that we can do so i mentioned it earlier the, the places where we would generally put the um, generic information would be on the website um, through notifications on the portal through leaflets things like that so you can we can for want of a better phrase hit you as many times as possible with what you need to know um, back onto the, the personal side of things so again as we mentioned when it comes to the decisions that you'd um, make one of the things that we we have spoken about is how we produce and provide those illustrations to you um, so we'd something along the lines of if you choose your remedy period to be treated as this so as your pre-15 your pension would be worth this if you decide to have it all treated as alpha this is what it would be so those in that information could uh is um be considered to be provided it's something we're likely to do but what we also want to look at is can we make it more personal to you through modelers things like that brilliant thanks andy yeah it is important to know that we will um, as you mentioned we have a duty to keep people informed and we will do as much as we possibly can to keep you informed but the website is the best starting point for anyone um, who wants to know more about mcleod and don't know anything and even those who do just keep an eye on the website because information will tend to go up there on the first basis um Silla, i'm going to come back to you now um this is a great question because I think you're going to be able to um, myth bust here, if you like. Um, is there any chance of, for those of us affected by the move to Alpha um, being reverted back to the old scheme? Because I've lost eight years of my retirement. Oh, yes, Nigel, you know me very well, don't you? So thank you. I am so happy to be able to bust this myth because it, it's one that comes up often when I talk to people at, say, Civil Service Live. And it's just so because it, and it worries people dreadfully. And I really don't like to see our members worried. They really, you know, if you understand your scheme, you can plan for your retirement. And actually, this is a re alpha is a really, really good pension scheme. All our schemes are really good. But alpha tends to get tagged as the one. Members come up to me in Civil Service Live and I go, which scheme are you in? They go, oh, the new one. The one. And I oh, go, my. my friends in the private sector would eat their right arm off for this pension. It's that good. Yes, so please, please don't write it off. But to come to your question, I think what happens is people see classic normal retirement age 60, alpha normally retirement age 68. You've stolen eight years of my retirement. That you're, oh, pardon me for the nasty word. Um, and that's not the case. You can retire at 60 through alpha, but what happens is you get an actuary reduction on your alpha pension. So it gets reduced from what you would otherwise get at 68. What, reduced for two reasons one of course you're not working so you haven't accrued that eight years of extra service and two what you have earned gets reduced because we're paying it for longer but what you've got to remember is the accrual rate in alpha is higher than the accrual rate in alpha or premium which is particularly where the age 60 comes from and that means if you're reducing something that's higher it doesn't necessarily mean to say you'll get less than you would have done under the old scheme. So there are some modelers around retirement um, and actual reductions on the website. Go and have a look, take your annual benefit statement, plug in your figures and say, well, if I did take it at 60 compared to 68, what would it give me? Um, because this isn't a question that's going to go away. As we said, despite the cloud judgment, Yes, we will remedy the discrimination, but we'll also end it. And ending it means potentially moving everyone into Alpha from April 2022. So if you're 60 after April 22, you'll still be looking at retiring out of Alpha for part of your benefits. So it is a, a very important point. 
Um, in terms of this, the 15 to 22 period, those who are moved from classic to alpha, yes, you'll get the opportunity to choose classic or alpha for that period. So, you're, so you'll get that period amended. Was that clear? Nigel? Yeah, that's right. really helpful, Scylla. Thank you for that. Um, and I think it's reassuring to know that um, Alpha is a good pension scheme um, because, like you say, when we are on the road meeting people, uh, you know, meeting people like yourself, not you, Scylla, but the people that are watching this, um, and we do have this quite often come up, and, um, and it is really, really uh, reassuring when we're able to explain to them that Alpha is a fantastic scheme and um, it has a lot of benefits in it. So, as Scylla said, you know, just to, just to reiterate that point, if you go to the scheme website, you can go to the member portal there and register, um, as I mentioned earlier. Now, there's loads of things that you can do on there, so you can update your death benefit nomination, you can um, look at your annual benefit statement, you can change your personal details, phone number, address, that sort of thing. Um, and you can also use the modeler, which as Silla's just mentioned, uh, it will, really will help you sort of look and build and plan for the future, um, you know, right up to that point. So if you're 20, you could be thinking about what your lifestyle is like now and what your lifestyle would like to be like when you come up to retirement, even if you're 50, if you're 40, if you're 30, there's, there's never a wrong time to do it. All you'll need to do to register for the portal to you to get to these uh, these uh, great services is you'll need your membership number, which you can find at the top of any letter that's been sent out uh, from the Civil Service Pension Scheme, and the activation code. Now, the activation code you will be able to find on your employer's intranet, um, and should you not be able to do that, just contact your HR department and they should be able to provide it. Um, and failing that, you can contact my CSP, the Scheme Administrator, um, who will also be able to provide that for you. Um, but those are the steps to go through first. Um, um, you can also use the scheme website if you don't want to use the uh, the portal um, and you can you can use the model that's on there that's not pre-populated it just means that you have to put in all the details yourself and also to my point earlier there is now a mobile app that you can get for iOS and Android devices which has all of that on there so it's even handier to use because it's at your fingertips you can use it when you sat on the sofa tonight in uh, enjoying uh, a glass of water or a glass of wine or whatever you, your tip of fancy is so I'm going to um, stick with you uh, on the next one because I think this is uh, closely related. Uh, what will happen uh, about the additional pension that I've paid during the period since 20 2015 under the McLeod judgment? This question is a little bit vague, Nigel, so I'll make an assumption. I've, I'll make an assumption that the questioner has asked about they've paid additional contributions to save extra. So this is over and above standard. And they're saying, what happens to those? Well, it will depend on which arrangement and which scheme you are in um, and the reason you were doing it. So there are some proposals in the Treasury consultation. Um, and I'd refer you back to that because it does explain the different options that we're asking you to look for. Um, but just to be clear, if you saved extra money into the defined contribution scheme, which is now with legal in general, but was for originally Scottish Widow Standard Life um, or Equitable Life, that's not affected in any way, shape or form. Brilliant. Thanks, Silla. Yeah, and I think it's fair to make an assumption on that question as well. Brilliant. Um, Andy, I'm going to come back to you now. Um, now, I'm in Alpha since October 2019. Uh, I'm awaiting a decision on McLeod as I'm aged 57, um, but I want to pay in some extra pension. Can I still pay into Classic? Uh, in considering you've moved over into Alpha, uh, no, you can all at the minute. Um, I'm going to re refer to added pension to begin with, uh, because you're a member of Alpha. The only scheme that you can increase is your Alpha pension. There is an alternative called uh, CSAVCs or Civil Service Additional Voluntary Contributions, as Scylla briefly mentioned before, who we use legal and general for, be affected by the um, consultation, the remedy, uh, because it's external to the civil service um, and it's essentially it's a private pension. Um, as Sil has mentioned as well in the consultation document, there are details of how additional or added pension would be affected or potentially affected by the, the remedy. Um, so it's just something to look at. Uh, I personally do added pension myself. Um, I think I am a massive fan when people do take out added pension uh, because they're taking, in, in my opinion, a positive step to increase, obviously, the, the pension they're going to receive to enable them to have uh, more options when they when they come to retire. Um, what I would recommend 
is obviously this is pension awareness week or as we're saying is, is pause for pensions is have that minute to, to pause and think about what your income and outgoing is going to be when you retire uh, and think can I save enough uh, things like that I was actually watching um, Good Morning Britain this morning and it was uh, Martin Lewis was on it was a really really good question about how much you should be saving towards your pension uh, things like that and even he was saying is the younger are to save towards your pension things like that the better it obviously is but as as you said Nigel uh, towards the beginning of the call it's you're never too it's never too late to consider um, boosting your pension uh, things like that I I love it when people talk about boosting uh, so thank you for that question it's great <laughs> you're welcome Andy no I totally agree with you as well it's never too late and the more that you can do to be thinking about and actively planning for your retirement the better um, because it will help you in the long run really um, Andy I'm going to stick with you uh, on this one actually because we're talking about contributions so uh, will contribution uh, levels also be affected by the McLeod judgment um, I seem to think that pre-2015 levels were far less than those after is, is that right? Um not really. I think it's from about 2012, all the contributions became around about the same. Um, definitely by 2015, all, 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 all scheme contributions were exactly the same level. Um, and they were part of the public reforms, you know, to make this scheme um, it's basically to have a less of an impact on uh, the UK taxpayer. Um, so everyone contributions rates are the same. People pay between four and a half. Well, it's just under four and a half up to about seven percent depending upon their earnings which for the benefits we get is extremely low and it's amongst the lowest in the pub one of the amongst it is amongst the lowest in all public sector schemes um you know and our the employer so all all our civil service employers pay extremely generous contributions things around a minimum of 27 percent something like that off the top of my head which is is, is brilliant you know um so it's just, that is something to consider when you're looking at the contributions that you're making one you know the public sector schemes as a comparatively low anyway your employer pays an extremely generous amount and plus the con the contributions that you pay towards your pension are actually you get tax relief on um which is brilliant so if we often get asked is should I just opt out of the scheme uh, because I'm paying let's say a hundred pound a month towards my pension I don't really I, I want that hundred pound a month in my back pocket instead if you're contributing that hundred pound you're not actually gonna get that if you decide to opt out it'd be more like probably 85 pound uh, increase you'll see in your your pay packet and the reason being you're not getting tax relief on those contributions so again it's just something to think about if you are considering maybe opting out have a pause and think about what you're actually giving up thanks andy that, that's really really helpful and uh, i'm liking your use of uh, pause there um, we've got time for one more question Silla. i'm going to come over to you if that's okay um I'm 55 and I'm part of the current VR, apologies, um, I can't see what the VR stands for, and I will use it for pension buyout. Will McLeod affect my annual pension and lump sum? Hi Nigel, so I'm assuming VR means voluntary redundancy. I so think. you're part of a redundancy program and you've accepted that you, you, know, you will leave. Now, generally as part of redundancy, when you get to a certain age, past your minimum pension age, you can use some of your, your payout or all of your payout to offset that actuarial reduction we talked about earlier and go out with a full pension. Uh, now, you will, it will be calculated or um, considered on the basis of the pension you are in now. So if you are going in the short term and you are in alpha, it will be considered on alpha terms and that's what will be applied. But if you are in scope for the judgment, and I don't know for this particular individual who asked the question, but if you qualify to be remedied under McLeod, then once we're in a position to, and we know how to deal with these cases, we know exactly um, the relevant, uh, what it would mean for you, we'll write out to you and we'll tell you what it means for you. And, but I would stress that won't be immediately. And it will be, you know, as the consultation says, this work will not, the majority of members will not have any sort of impact until after 2022. So, you know, you won't be ignored by leaving. You're not going to lose the right to a remedy, but um, it, you know, it will take a little while before we can actually tell you what it means for you. 
Brilliant. Thanks, Silla. That's really, really helpful. And that's a great question to wrap up on there as well. So um, I just want to say thanks very much to um, our panel of experts today. Thank you, Silla. Thank you, Andy. It's been incredible to have you here to really help sort of boil down what is a complex subject. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really sort of one of those subjects going to affect um, many, many civil servants. So thank you ever so much for your time today. Um, as well, thank you to you uh, who, who've attended, who've given up their lunch times. Um, you are free to uh, go and get the uh, sandwich and the salad bowl and whatever it else is that you've got today. Um, hopefully you've learned something today. Um, we will follow this up, this recording, as I said earlier, will be made available on the Scheme website from tomorrow afternoon onwards. So if you do want to go back and refer to anything, you can do. Um, you can watch us live in your lounge. Um, we also we will answer the questions as well. I'll be honest, we haven't got through all the questions today um, because we've got so many of them, which is great. I'm really pleased that so many of you are asking these questions and want to know more about it. It shows how engaged you are. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to get these answered and up on the website in the next few weeks. Uh, so do keep an eye and keep checking back up to the, uh, to the pause page on the scheme website. Um, we will also be sending out a survey shortly as well, and we would be ever so grateful. I would be really, really grateful if you could complete that because uh, it will really help us define what we do for you in the future as well, whether we do more of these sessions, whether we do something else for you. Feedback's a gift, uh, good, bad or indifferent. I was taught that early on in my career, and I fully believe it, that we can always learn and we can always change and we can always improve. So uh, anything that you do want to add, you can do. Um, now and hopefully you've uh, you've made your, your five things today your, your list of your five things to do uh, one of them would be visiting the scheme website uh, possibly registering for the portal maybe downloading the app um, definitely definitely uh, looking at the consultation if you're going to be affected by this and feeding into that and obviously really shaping uh, what the outcome could possibly be um, and then finally um, obviously the fifth one of your choice so uh, hopefully you've learned a lot today uh, thank you for joining us all at live at lunch um, and hopefully maybe we'll see you tomorrow for our last one of 2020 um, and have a great day everyone thanks and goodbye